So, FNAF fan games. If you've been a fan of FNAF or still are, you know that there are a lot of FNAF fan games, ranging from good to bad to what the fuck. What's my personal opinion on them? Well, they're not bad. They're pretty good. I used to enjoy playing them. Hell, I still play them sometimes and a new one is announced. And since I made a video on the main FNAF games, you should go watch that too. I wanted to make a video of the fan games of FNAF, you know, where the community really shows, which for some of these games, it doesn't show the community that well since, uh, you know, pedophiles. Anyway, the main thing, FNAF fan games are pretty cool things of art, and I'm not gonna go over the new FNAF fan games, no, 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 I'm going over the older ones, the ones that are, well, arguably worse, but they're very, very nostalgic. Five Nights at Candy's, the fan game that most people think of, or at least know of, when it comes to these types of games. This wasn't the first FNAF fan game, but it was definitely one of them that popularized the making of fan games. This was the first game I really played since I was a newcomer to the whole FNAF thing, and before you say anything, no, I'm not using the remastered footage. It isn't the original game, theoretically, so shut up. Although it's still a very good FNAF fan game, at least to me, it was definitely scarier back then, but it's still a tiny bit spooky. Holy shit. Today has been- OH MY FUCKING GOD! Now the lore is pretty simple, thank god. Basically, the new Freddy's Pizzeria closed down and someone else thought, why not make a new location to rival Freddy's? You know, what What could go wrong? To answer that question, a lot, uh, a lot could go wrong. In between nights, you get these cutscenes, and I'm gonna be honest, I don't fully know what they're implying, but all I know is that some kids got totally murdered. Supposedly, Candy and Sydney are possessed by, wouldn't you know, dead children because they were both killed by Cat, which is a great- a great name for an animatronic? Five Nights at Candy's is like a mixture of FNAF 1 and FNAF 2. You have two doors beside you that you can close, and there's a window in front of you that you can shut as well. But that's only for one animatronic called Blank, which is probably my favorite character. It also has night vision cameras, which is kind of like FNAF 2's lighting of the cameras. It was pretty popular as soon as it came out, and Markiplier, the holy girl himself, even said it was one of his favorite FNAF fan games for the time. Before we get into anything else, Candy, you know, the main character of this whole series, was already a made character before the game was even announced, but someone else stole Emil Mako's character for a fan game, that's the creator of the game, which was Candy. At least that's what the internet has told me, so if I'm wrong, uh, blame the fuck who made the internet. Everyone loves this game, at least some people, not not this person. This game would eventually lead there to be a Five Nights at Candy's 2, Five Nights at Candy's 3, Five Nights at Candy's World, and even a Five Nights at Candy's 4 being announced. Although it's been years, I'm, I'm still waiting for it to come out, please, please release it. Since this is one of the most popular FNAF fan games, it has a lot of merchandise. I know I said my favorite character was blank but i'm gonna be honest i think i take that back look, look at this little guy look at him this is the most adorable animatronic i think i've ever seen overall fun nights at candies is a great game even now and hopefully fun nights at candies 4 comes out soon please uh Please? Now, Five Nights at Treasure Island, you either know this as the first FNAF fan game or you just you just really like Disney. Now, I don't actually believe that this was the first ever FNAF fan game, but if any of you fucks know what the real first FNAF fan game was, then let me know. I enjoyed this game, I truly do, but it looks like ass. That's why I'm using this kind of updated version for the footage. Look at this and tell me you want this as the footage. You do? Well, you're not getting it. Anyways, if you don't know, Treasure Island is a real place that the Mickey Mouse himself closed down due to low attendance and someone probably died there or something. Hey, I don't know, it's it's just a theory. Hey guys, editor's note real quick. Um, I thought that the island was actually called Treasure Island, but it's not. That's just a creepypasta that is from Discovery Island, the actual name of the Disney or abandoned Disney island. So so if I mention the name of the actual island as Treasure Island, um that is why I am stupid and I need to do I, I need to do research better. Okay, on on with the video. This guy called Jake went to work the security gig. He didn't know much, so eventually someone called Lisa told Jake that there was something else there. You probably already knew that since it's a, you know, FNAF fan game. As the nights go on, the animatronics or beings try to kill Jake or get rid of him. And they eventually do because supposedly something called Mother jumped on Jake and that sounds very, uh, sexual. But it's funny to imagine just a random ass mom jump on this guy and just start choking the fuck out of him. I didn't get that far into the game, I'm gonna be honest, but I can only imagine it was an interesting watch. Definitely didn't get what he signed up for, let's just say that much. Although this isn't one of my favorite FNAF fan games, it's still one you have to remember. Five Nights at Candy's definitely expanded the fan game business, but this one really started it all. Seeing an inverted color Mickey Mouse used to make people shift themselves. There's more to this game as well. There's a whole organization called SSA, which is I'm pretty sure the company Jake works for and is why he's there in the first place. I just quit at that point though. The amount of lore in this game is actually quite surprising. One thing I'm surprised about is how Disney hasn't sued the makers of this game yet. I'm not saying I wish they did, I'm just 
just saying it's a pretty crazy thing to get away with since some people know Treasure Island for this game and not the actual thing. Back then, I was one of those people. I didn't know what the hell Treasure Island was until I looked it up. It's a great game though, or at least the updated versions. I'm gonna be honest, I can't play the older one without my eyes killing themselves. And before we continue on, you've been here for five minutes already. You know, why not subscribe and maybe even like, you know, you totally should. And hope you had a happy Halloween. All right, all right, I'll let you watch now. Jolly is one of my favorite FNAF fan games ever, and I can't really pinpoint why, but it, it just is. The visuals are, of course, not the best, but they're still pretty good. And the mechanics, they take a while to get used to, but once you do, it is so fun. Jolly is based off a real restaurant joint called Jollibee's. I've never been, but their food looks... <clears throat> Ew, actually, a... Uh, Maybe not. Anyways, the lore is pretty basic. Circus Baby's Pizza World opened and pulling customers from other locations. So somebody made a new location with five brand spanking new animatronics. Somebody named Michael Schmidt takes the job. Wait, wait a second. That name sounds familiar. And wouldn't you know, the animatronics are deadly. Survive five nights like the usual, or six, or even seven. The lore is pretty basic, you know, nothing special there, but the mechanics is where this game shines. You have different things of power, one being the generator's power, and the other being the building's power. There's only one door, but that honestly makes it all the better. You mostly work everything on the camera systems, closing vents, moving elevators, making sure Cal Yu doesn't kill you, just, you know, just the basics. The animatronics are actually, in a way, scary. This is the only fan game where I've been really scared, except Baby's Nightmare Circus, but that's another story for another day. Later on, it's known that somebody by the name of Kevin Johnson, the CEO of Jolly, was experimenting with these characters to preserve human life. At least that's what the wiki said. I'm pretty certain Kevin Johnson is like the William Afton of Jolly. Always remember, if an old white guy owns a restaurant, get the fuck out of there! Another franchise of games based on the Jolly series was gonna be made called Jollibee, but it was cancelled due to, of course, copyright reasons. There was a lot for this game too, so it's kinda sad to see it cancelled, but maybe just change the name, I have no clue. I don't know how copyright really works. If it wasn't for the mechanics of this game, it wouldn't be as good. Would also like to bring up that the creator of Jolly made a Five Nights at Minecraft game, so that earns my respect. Jolly is not so jolly, but it's a great game that I suggest you play. Or don't. I don't care what you do with your life. Five Nights at Wario is now I know what you're thinking, this game looks like shit, and yes it does, but actually there's no but, it isn't the best playing FNAF fan game either. For back then though, people enjoyed it. It was released January 6, 2015, so of course it wasn't gonna be the best. We didn't even have Five Nights at Candy's, Jolly's, nor One Night at Flumpty's yet, so it was still in the early stages of the FNAF fan games. Although it looks like ass, it is still kind of good in a way. Ripped images from Google and the audio sucks, but it has that nostalgic feel that a lot of these games have. And don't worry, there's more Five Nights at Wario's where that came from, but it's a very simple premise. Richard McRoy signs up for a new position at an old fast food factory, or fucking somehow the ghosts of Wario, Waligi, Luigi, Peach, and Mario are there. No clue how, it's never really explained. Now kind of like Treasure Island and Disney, I'm surprised Nintendo didn't throw this game into a grave because usually they do. I mean, we all know how Nintendo is, they hate their fans. I mean, they uh, they don't hate their fans. Playing this game again was fun though, as boring as it looks, as quick as it probably took to make, it is still fun. Since this was the first to an eventually pretty big series, it isn't the best of course, but I really like 5 shows at Wario's, that's a good game. Before we even start with One Night at Flumpty's, let's just get one thing straight, the creator of it sucks, bad person. One Night at Flumpty's came out around the same time as Five Nights at Wario's did, and it is in my opinion, better. It's very different from a lot of other FNAF fan games. The art style is actually drawn out with no polygon looking models, I mean there's probably some, but you know what I mean. The characters are are also vastly different with one being an egg, a birthday boy, a beaver, a creepy ass clown, a blood clot, and a fucking eyesore, whatever the hell this thing is. It's a pretty easy game nonetheless, I beat it on the second try. There really is no lore to this game. Flumpty Bumpty, the main character, is just a very powerful being. He can transcend time and space, so there's no getting around him. But he just wants to have fun, so you're basically like a little rat to him. The game mechanics though are very similar to the original Fun Nights at Freddy's, with there being two doors, you can shut them, with there being lights to turn on as well, you know, the usual. Only difference really is at a certain point the clown grunk fuss comes out of the hole in the wall. I do thoroughly enjoy how this game plays though. Instead of there being five nights, or six, or seven, or even eight, Jesus. There's only one night that gets progressively harder as the night goes on. Everyone loves this game, with there being plenty of references to Flumpty and other fan games, and everyone used to love the creator. Keyword, used. As an OG FNAF fan, as they call it, I love this game. This was easily one of my favorites back in the day. Another thing I really like about this game is just the bullshitness of it. Is that a word? I, I think it is. The creator definitely tried on it, but it was one of the first fan games that had that sort of comedic feel to it. Main thing to get from One Night at Flumpty's, game good, creator shit. 
Now Pop Goes I found as an interesting fan game in the FNAF world. I just played it a week ago so take this with a grain of salt, but the mechanics are some of the hardest I've had to learn, and that's not in a bad light. I also could just be stupid so you know, I don't really know. I still have a hard time understanding what the fuck's happening in this game, but I'm trying my best to, I swear. Pop Goes is another fan game that takes place in the FNAF multiverse, I guess you'd call it. About a year after the fire at Fazbear Fright, somebody named Fritz wants to continue the animatronic restaurant branding with him making his own restaurant joint called the Pop Goes Pizzeria. A few days after the game starts, Fritz, uh, well, he accidentally murdered his daughter in a PTSD attack. Since her soul has nowhere to go, she resides in the pizzeria trying to find an animatronic to possess, aka the Black Rabbit. I know, I know, a pretty big opening, but oh, hey, it gets better. Throughout the nights, Pop Goes the Weasel tries to build this animatronic. Should also mention that there are 3D printers scattered all throughout the pizzeria. I also forgot to mention, we play as a goddamn robot. Uh, so take of that what you will. And the whole time, another robot named Simon is trying to connect to us. If this sounds confusing, don't worry. My brain is setting fire just trying to understand this all. The mechanics, as I already mentioned before, are also confusing, at least to me. This game has always kind of confused me even when I heard about it all the way back in 2016. If I can't understand what the fuck is going on now, my seven or eight year old brain definitely couldn't either. We as the night guard have to turn off all the 3D printers so Pop Goes can't complete the new animatronic. I'm pretty sure you just turn off the camera and that's how you stop them. It worked for me. I Again, I'm a little stupid. One thing I really like about the mechanics of this game is the panic meter. It goes up with the more hell that occurs and you have to look at the outside world for the panic meter to go down so you don't faint. And with the squirrel animatronics, Sarah and Saffron, you have to heat the vents so they don't get near you. And that's the most understandable mechanic there is in this game. Fritz Glade is also the same person as Jeremy Fitzgerald, who is the night guard in FNAF 2. My mind is currently blown. Kane Carter, you smart son of a bitch. Now I could probably spend an hour explaining each character, but this is a Nokelda video. You, you really expect me to do that? Now, I'm pretty certain a new version of this game, Pop Goes Evergreen, is being worked on since it's a part of the Fazbear fanverse. Speaking of the Fazbear fanverse, uh, real quick, where's the fucking Five Nights at Freddy's Plus? Huh? Anyways, Pop Goes is a great game. Just my brain cannot handle it sometimes. So, all in all, FNAF fan games are always going to be popular. I mean, there's still a lot being made today, and they're all great. With the FNAF community being as big as it is, especially with the FNAF movie coming out, fan games are never going anywhere, really. So, that begs the question. How's FNAF fan games in 2023? You know, they're, they're pretty good, I guess.